Hey. I'm used to hitting record and then knowing exactly what um, I'm going to say because it's an update. As we know, there's not a whole lot for me to update anymore. But, um, so I'm taking the time that I need to get things done and things taken care of and, you know, time for Anthony to, and I to really, you know, let what happens sink in and despite, you know, being really un unwanted, we're trying to figure out, you know, the next step, the next attempt to find what our new normal is. But while I've been while I've been uh, doing that, while while he and I have been kind of figuring out the next right thing, um, I've really been thinking about. A lot of you and specifically there are more than I ever thought ever thought that are essentially starting new lives with me um, people who have come to question everything um, their their faith their religion their parenting their priorities, their outlook, they, I mean, essentially a new standing and a new perspective on life. And, and, uh, I really am having a hard time getting you out of my head. I've seen a lot of, I don't know what to do. Here I am. What's step one? Um, and I don't want you to feel like you feel those things in you're by yourself or you're alone or or anything like that so um I've also had a lot of people you know ask me how did you get where you are like how did you get so strong in your faith how did you get you know where you you know are so grounded in in your life that you can be um able to pull out some strength when you need it and as I've been trying to figure out this this new normal um, I found that I revert to uh, the, the three things um, that that Anthony and I use to uh, live essentially so I thought I'd share them with you you can totally take it or leave it but um, I'm going to tell you the three things that I think uh, helped prepare me for essentially hell on earth. Um, Anthony and I consistently live three things. Number one, train your body. Long before you need it, train your body. I never really worked out uh, or exercised before, before Raven. I did a lot of fad diets. Um, once I had Raven, I guess in my mind I thought, I want to get my body back. And so I started working out. I've never been really able to like stick with working out. I, you know, do something, I get bored, I move on, I get bored with that too. But, um, you know, after Raven was born, I started working out. And in 2015, so when she's two years old, I started CrossFit and I know when people hear CrossFit they either get intimidated or they think it's a cult or you know they have their own opinions about it I get it I used to have those opinions when I started CrossFit uh, it, it really opened up a whole new world for me when I was at the hospital uh, you know I'm pregnant and I have enough hormones for that and then I had just had my six-year-old who had a brain injury. And through my videos, if you've seen them, we learned a lot of science lessons on, on a mother's body and what it can do. And uh, at first, I think people were worried. 
you know, how much my body could handle uh, being pregnant and then having uh, a traumatic experience with my other child. It did not take very long for everybody to to stop worrying and to realize that my body was uh, fit enough to handle uh, what I was asking of it uh, for both of my children, essentially. It was because subconsciously, I think I was preparing myself for something such as this. In CrossFit, I pushed my body to the limit every day. Every day was a black hole where I lived through the suck and I knew that I would make it through. So I pushed, pushed, pushed my body to the limit and then I went back to normal. And then the next day, I pushed it to an even further limit and then I went back to normal. So over time, well, three years of that, uh, my body was obviously ready, prepared main thing right so that Raven was able to use whatever energy that she could use for me while the other child could use what energy it needed for me so train your body way before you need it uh, because you may need it and you may need a lot more than you think of it right and you need it to pay up and it did because we train our bodies consistently okay two Train my mind, train your mind. What I mean by that is the situation with Raven tested my entire mental state. I think you could assume that it would, right? So if I had not prepared my mind, did I think that I was ever going to have anything like this? No, not at all. But I make sure, and Anthony makes sure, that we broaden the horizons of the way we think. Um, I have listened to many podcasts um, on mental toughness, mental maturity, what it means to react to something versus versus respond to something. Uh, how do you grow in your, you know, testing of your, you know, thoughts and your feelings, and what is a feeling, what is fleeting, what is a thought, things like that. That push the boundaries of your mind a little bit. If you need uh, a starting point, I would, if I uh, could give any advice, would start with the podcast Chasing Excellence. And that is by Ben Bergeron. There is multiple episodes and you know, they're like 40 minutes, but um, he is a CrossFit coach of the world-class uh, winning athletes uh, in CrossFit. But I love about I love him for the fact that he works inside out. So he works with their mind, he works with their uh, mental capacity before technically he works uh, outside, right? So um, yes, it's CrossFit, yes, it's whatever, but even if you don't do CrossFit, even if you don't technically exercise, uh, there's a lot of gold in those. Push, pushing your mind, training your mind so that if you're in a situation that tests it, you've already prepared for that. Uh, I would say that that, that helped me. Um, I'm, I'm worried if I hadn't have done that, hadn't have practiced, uh, I, I'm not sure what my mental cracking point was, uh, but I think that if I was gonna have one, I would have had it, I would have had it. Third, train your soul. Train your body. Train your mind, train your soul. Jesus is not something that I picked up on the ground a week before my daughter uh, had a terrible brain injury. My parents were, were gracious in the fact that they uh, raised me in church. Uh, we started the current church that we are. It was called Path... Oh, sorry. It was called St. Matthew back then. <coughs> yes, I still have a cough. Now it's called Pathway. Uh, I'm sure that you've heard of it somehow via Raven in her story. But um, my mom took me there when I was eight. She was also pregnant with my brother who just graduated from college. So, I mean, we've been going there um, for a long time. She took me to youth. I have always had an affinity for uh, working in the church. I was very involved in youth. I wanted to help. And um, 
looking back, I think that my life led me up to to what happened. Um, I started playing piano there when I was 12. Uh, my mentor, Sherry Seacrest, <clears throat> she was the piano player before me. And um, she taught me in children's choir when I was little. And uh, she actually lost her son. Her son died in a terrible car crash. And the first uh, weekend after her son had died, she could not play piano. And actually, that was the first Sunday that they let me play for big church. So, weird, odd, I guess. Um, that's when I started playing uh, piano in, in what I call big church, in real church. Um, when she retired from piano, I took over. She and I are very good friends still. And so, I learned from her what it's like to lose a child uh, at a very close proximity. Fitting that 20 years later, I would lose mine. Right? So, but for people who have just now found Jesus, what I would advise is, find a church. I know that sounds so cliche. But... It also helps you train your mind, right? When you're training your soul. There have been times, I want people to know that I, yes, I grew up in church, sure. I worked at a youth group, sure, I play piano. But guys, I have done bad things in my lifetime. I have done things that I don't believe in and that I don't think are right, right? I have, lit, I'll tell you, I'll be real honest. I haven't told a lot of people this, but I have had a period in my life where I sat on the floor in the back of the church and listened to the sermon that way because I didn't think that I deserved to sit down in a real seat because with some of the things that I've done, I just didn't think that I had a seat at the table. Was that God? No, absolutely not. It was me and my guilt. But even when I felt like I didn't deserve a seat at the table, I just went and I just listened. And I just trained my soul over and over, week after week after week, right? Some of you say that you don't know how to pray and you're talking into the dark now because that's all you know how to do. And I think that is another coolest story ever. I love it when you say, I'm standing on I, nothing, I don't know what I believe, but I know that I didn't believe before Raven's story, and now I have no idea what I believe. Guess what? The time where you believe nothing or stand on nothing is the best time to question everything. That means that you took one step forward and your mind's open. Train your body, train your mind, train your soul. Find a church, just listen, just soak it in, just question just be present those are the things that I would do if I were just starting and saying what is the first step of my new life um, again it's not an update I wish that I were giving you updates but I have none left for Raven um, the movement is amazing. The, the reach is amazing. I am constantly overwhelmed. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of the people who are changed. I'm changed. I'm with you. Thank you for everything that you've done. From the bottom, from the bottom of my mother heart, still. See you later.